and welcome to this Harvey County Talk special. I'm your host, Lance Gormley. Our guest on the program today is Scott Gibbons. Scott Gibbons is the worshipful master or the president, so to speak, for the Freemasons here in Newton, Kansas, which is Lodge 142. Two. Uh, so if you see uh, on the corner of, if you've seen the big building on the corner of Broadway and Main that's been there since the beginning of Newton, then that's where, that's where the lodge is at, right? Yes, that is where the lodge is at. The building has been there since 1879. Okay. So it took six years from the founding of the lodge to have the building. Okay, very good. Um, then it was expanded twice, once in 1883, and then again it was improved in 1931 during the Great Depression as a work project. Mm. So it's got a long-standing history it, here in Newton. It's got a long-standing history here in Newton. And yes, I would say does. one of the, I think, probably the longest-standing civic organization in the community? It very well could be. I don't have specific dates on when the other ones were founded, but, you know, the lodge came into existence in October of 1872. Um, the city of Newton was founded in May of 1872, so we're right there at the beginning of the city itself and of the county. I mean, the county became a county in February of 1872. So you're very close to the very beginning, if not one of the oldest, the oldest. So very cool. Very we're, cool. we're there. Well, I was wanting to do a special project. So we're going to have a series of uh, a few different <clears throat> uh, audios, interviews with uh, leaders of community, uh, uh, civic organizations within the community. Uh, you know, Freemasons, we have uh, Rotary, we have Kiwanis. There's, there's a group of civic organizations in our community that do a lot to give back and people um, to participate in that and whatnot. But, um, but all the same, I, I was wanting to just get people out uh, who are, are leaders of those organizations and just promote them and what they do and what they're about and hopefully just bring to light some of those things that they do do for the community as well as what they're about really you know where do they start why you know how'd you come to be and uh i'm a part of a couple different uh organizations one being masons so i know a little bit about you know our local lodge and masonry but uh with that being said uh you know i i wanted to have you on the program because i'm the most familiar right with this organization and just have uh, you explain a little bit about, well, who are the Masons and where do they come from and what, uh, what, how do they, um, like, for instance, what you just explained when it came to, well, how just they came here about the time that Newton started. I believe the Masons were here beforehand. It just so happened that everything got organized around the same time. Okay. So the state of Kansas, you know, came into existence, what, in 18... 56 something along that lines just before the civil war i think we were officially branded a state after the um, referendum went around in 1861 um so the grand lodge of kansas was founded before kansas was a state it was also in 1856 that's when kansas became a grand lodge okay. um, affiliated with all the rest of the lodges in the country that existed so um i I'm sure that we were here and members of the masonry at the time were part of the foundings of many things that happened in Kansas. One, probably the statehood itself, one, the legislature, yeah. two counties, then cities within those counties. It's kind of hard to validate those statements because we don't have a lot of records that are easily accessible from those time periods where, you know, you can go and search it up and say, hey, click, 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 click. This guy yeah. was... Um, in some of the research that I have done, I do know that the city marshal of the city of Can or of Newton, when it became a city, was a mason. Marshall King was a mason at the time when the city was founded. Um, we know that Judge Muse was also a mason, um, and he's one of the first judges for the city of Newton, yeah, um, okay. and we know that he was a mason. So there are several... Um, other prominent members, I'm sure that were Masons. I just can't prove that or validate it from any historical record standpoint. Yeah, when you but get, yeah, I'm sure that they're there. I'm sure that those things can be proved, and I'm sure that they have been over time. I just don't have it at this exact minute. Yeah, we could find it, right? It uh, can be found. Well, it's interesting when you go into the lodge. I know I've given personal tours of that, and we open up the lodge uh, many times a year. One being um, when the car show. Yes. Uh, that's coming up where we'll be having a pancake feed and anybody can 
uh, come up into the lodge and to the lodge, there's a whole wall of pictures. Of, there is. Of, of people yeah. that were so, leaders of the organization, and those mm-hmm. names are all over this community. That, that is true. I mean, all over it. That is true. Um, we are, I don't know, I've seen, I haven't seen this in any other lodge, but we do have pictures of every person that was worshipful master or president for their year hanging on our wall. So you can go and look and see, oh, who was the guy in 1883? Oh, well, there he is, and that's what he looked like. Yeah. And any time frame that you want to find, that person's picture is there. Yeah. So it's a great thing for us to have. Um, it, it does help um, with people that come in and visit, and you can see where the history came from. I've, I've, people so. have told me it's like a museum. It does look a little bit museum-like. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that was by design or by accident. Um, you know, uh, lots of museums have woodwork, and our building is full of woodwork yeah. and um, porcelain work, tile work. Yeah. So, it, yeah, seems to go hand in hand in, yeah. in those type of buildings and, and the staff's rooms. See, uh, every, so every year there's a new leader elected. From the membership, correct. To, to That's right. Serve as the president of the worship master. That is WM, correct. That's right. WM. Uh, so uh, that that person is responsible for uh, basically all the duties, similar to what like a president would be of a different civic organization. So the way we like to explain it is, you're in charge of every, or you're responsible for everything, but in charge of nothing. Yeah. So you, you are elected. So the, the person that is the head of the organization every year is elected by the membership uh, of the organization um, with, by, well, I shouldn't say with or by, but for the purpose of maintaining the organization for that calendar year. So we have elections in December and that person takes over uh, basically January 1 and goes to December 31 of the, that year. Um, and we've been very fortunate over the years to not have missed a year. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then um, with that being said, then um, there's uh, every every year, uh, similar to other organizations, I know that there's things that uh, the local lodge does. Um, what are like? I guess. I guess. Let's take it back. How did you find yourself in masonry? So. Um, I was the employee of Mason, a guy that was a Mason before me. And one day we were at work and he needed to leave early because the rest of us were still working because he said he had a meeting. And after talking to him, I said, hey, that sounds like a great organization. I'd like to get involved. And so I got a petition and I filled it out and I turned it in and the membership voted to bring me in and I became a Mason. So I became a Mason in 2002. Um, I petitioned the lodge in July. Um, I took my initiation in in August, um, and then I became a Master Mason in October of 2002. So we have three um, levels, we call them um, degrees. So you start out as an entered apprentice, you move to a fellow craft, and then you become a master. So okay. in today's um, jargon, if you think about it of the trade organizations, um, you have an entered apprentice in say electrical work, that person becomes a journeyman, we call it a fellow craft, and then that person becomes a master electrician, same for us, we call them a master. Yeah. Um, so three principal levels or, or degrees of masonry. Um, each of them basically brings to you more information and enlightenment, okay. um, understanding. So uh, we do those through allegorical uh, references. So no. yeah. um, so when you um, um, first heard about masonry and then you um, asked to go look at it or to join, right? Yep. Um, what, what, was, um, what was that overall uh, experience like for you? So, it's kind of hard for me to remember back 20 years ago, but uh, um, I'll do the best that I can. So um, what I thought at first was, um, you know, they were a organization that people didn't know a lot about. So in today's jargon, we say secret society, but instead of a secret society, how about a society with secrets? 
those secrets can be knowable by anybody that's out there in the same fashion that I knew them, and that's by becoming a member. So you become a member and they tell you what the secrets are. Yeah. So it's, they don't hold them back from you. Um, then it is your job as a person to decide whether those secrets are important or not important, whether they're valuable to you or whether you can do something with them or, or not. Most people find that uh, those, those secrets, as we call them, um, are valuable in life overall. And yes, yeah, so I was gonna go on to that. When you, when you talk about a, a secret, um, the thing that comes to mind for me is, is uh, like something that I didn't know before. Correct. Right. That very so, much what a secret is, is something you didn't know and then you learned about it and all of a sudden it's not a secret anymore. Yeah. So it's fairly basic, it's right? It's pretty basic. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then when we get into this idea of way of thinking and philosophy, it would be similar to someone who might, um, I guess the question would be, would it would be similar to somebody who has faith in something and then they of go course. read the Bible or they go read whatever of book of enlightenment that they feel Yes. is the direction they need to go, and then they have knowledge now that they didn't have before because they sought it out, right? That, that's right, yeah. Okay. So um, masonry is interwoven with religion. It is not a religion, but we do use religion. We use passages from the Bible in order to make um, further uh, validation of the points that we hold or... Um, Expound on ex our girl interpretation. Yes. So... Um, one of the passages that a lot of people know is um, seek and ye shall find, uh, knock and you sh you know you'll discover. Yeah, um, you should be open to you. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Uh, so as you've uh, progressed on, this has been uh, well, like you said, twenty years. Uh, I know from experience that there are people in uh, this organization uh, that are have been there for a very very long time. Um, yes. Similar with a lot of other civic organizations within the community. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, but with that, over over like the last twenty years, how has your um, involvement in masonry changed your perspective, or how how has it changed? Like you just mentioned, what ex what it was like when you first kind of walked in the door. Now, what do you feel masonry has done for you, or been? So I feel that masonry has just expounded on the things that I already knew about myself, but were lying under the surface that I've now brought to the surface. So helping my fellow human, you know, either whether that be in a tragic situation or whether that be just in a hardship, or whether it's just putting your arm around someone who's having a tough day and saying, hey, little buddy, it's gonna be okay. We're here to help you if you need yeah. some help. So. Um, I think those were the parts of masonry that are the most important to me, uh, is being able to just have a kinship with my fellow man yeah. and you know help them along their journey, which they help me as well. So all of this journey is about knowledge. Everything that we do is about knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more round of a person you are. So one of the things we go to school for is to become educated. Well, if you go to school and you only learn one function, are you as educated as you should have been? Good call. And maybe not. Yeah. So um, the more things that you can learn, the more experiences that you can have, um, the more enlightened of a person you can be, and hopefully the, the more you bring to society as, as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Um... So I know I, I mentioned that there's a pancake feed coming up. Um, I know that was something that's uh, done uh, to raise money, right? Um, right. We also, uh, in the past, uh, people come buy fireworks from us, right? We're one of those other organizations you can come buy fireworks from. But when, right. when that happens and people are there purchasing um, those things for us and they're supporting our organization, what kind of things... Um, does that money go to? So we have se several fundraisers. The two main ones that you've already mentioned are our pancake feed and our firework stand. And what those help us do is support and give back to our community. So ways that we support our community is we support the Salvation Army. We support the food bank. We support the, um, the homeless shelter. Uh, we support the high schools for students, so there's a scholarship program that, that uh, they can um, apply for and get scholarships to go to colleges or community colleges or wh whichever path they choose. Um, 
we send a band student to the Shrine Bowl um, to perform in the marching band. Um, we do we uh, we give to various other organizations just to help out. And also, we would use that money. Say a, a person becomes homeless, so a guy lost his job, he can't pay for his house. Um, we would take that money that we raise and we would help him, you know, say with a month's worth of rent or groceries or whatever we need. So um, since we are a nonprofit, all the money that we bring in in each year, we have to spend or send back out. We have to come back to zero. That's the goal. Is that, that everything is the that come in that, yep. that gets, it then gets That's uh, right. processed through to someone else and, and benefit exactly. them? Exactly. That's right. That's interesting. Um, so um, as as this has gone over the years, uh, oh, well, I'll say this, this, the talk of the library. I know that we've had a lot of talk library. People are focused in on the library here locally or whatever, and I don't know how many people know that when you walk in the front door of what's going to be the old library, there's a little plaque right there. And it has uh, our lodge number and said that this was, you know, contributed to by us, right? Uh, or the Freemason organization. Uh, so that seems to be something big, um, not just in line with what maybe you you were referencing. So are there times in which um, our law or the, your, our lodge is able to um, help benefit the community as a whole from? other bigger things i believe there is an opportunity for that to to be um something that we can do um i'm only aware of the library as a, having been one of those functions that we did donate to the building of the library um, but i'm sure that there are other ones that could come along that yes we could easily be a participant for, of and have some memorial stone similar to that one you know put in other buildings around the city yeah. sure cool. Th those are that's something we could do with those funds each year. Yeah. So uh, moving into a, another part of this, this episode is um, kind of, I think, for whatever the reason, Freemasonry often gets a bad rap. And I think that it comes from the fact that they're, you know, I, you coined the phrase, right, that we're, it's not a society... It's not a secret society, but a society with secrets. Right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, when with that being the case, then let's let's move out of just the scope of Newton itself and say, um, what 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 are, I guess, give me a little bit more history on um, masonry itself. I know that we've had discussions in the past, and we can even say that um, the founding fathers of this country. Uh, we know are so I mean what's what's some of that like so we know that the first um, lodge that was erected came into existence in 1717 as the Grand Lodge of London um, they were the first that we know of in history that was that called themselves a lodge um, we believe that our organization came from the uh, Masons guilds of the Middle Ages or even the Enlightenment time frame. So somewhere between the 1200s and the 1500s, um, we're not 100% sure uh, because we don't have records that validate those points. Um, we also believe that we date clear back to the times of the Bible with King Solomon's temple and the erection of Roman cities and other. All of those places had Masons because Masons built, put stone together. They quarry it from the, the rough quarries where it's just hammered out of the ground. They shape it, they move it to a site, and they erect buildings with it. So we know that they come from a long history, but when they organize, organized into what we know uh, today as Masonry, um, we believe started in 1717 in England. From there, it came to the colonies, um, and several of uh, the colonies organized um, lodges. Um, we know that uh, of the, the colonies, the people that were in the colonies disagreed with the way that England was running those colonies, and they were members that helped found the country as we know it today. So we know that 23 members uh, of Masons or Masons are signers of the Declaration of Independence. 
Um, one of those being John Hancock, who is the largest signature on the Declaration of Independence. He was a Mason. He was one of the first, that's why. He, he, yeah, yeah, so, um, but he was a Mason. There are 23 others from various states that are on there, New York and Pennsylvania and Connecticut and Massachusetts. Um, we know that six of the first seven presidents of the United States were Masons. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, um, John Adams, uh, May, um, James Madison. These guys were all Masons. Um, Pierre L'Enfant, who designed the city of Washington, D.C., which is now our capital, or it was designed as our capital, was a Mason. He was a Mason in France, but he was a Mason, and he designed the footprint of what we know today as Washington, D.C., and our seat of government. And it was specifically designed to intimidate the heads of other nations coming here because it, it's very grand, very open spaces, very right angles, um, very neoclassic modern buildings. So um, from there, then Masons spread out throughout the United States and are, have been involved in hundreds of different functions, whether which, forming states or yeah. forming cities. and Which brings us back to Kansas. You know, I, I say for all the bad rap, right? But um, when, you, when you walk into the state capitol, most people don't realize what a reflection of that actually is of... Oh, for sure. The, the people that helped bring Kansas into statehood clearly used Washington, D.C. as a footprint of how to lay out your capital. Yeah. And they mimicked it with what we see in Topeka today around the capital of the state of Kansas with a large, you know, capital building dome, in the yeah. middle with a big dome on the top, Separating very similar both the to cent, the yeah. Congress of the United States. Yeah. We, we have, you know, several buildings around the outside, which look very similar to Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they clearly took that as an example to design the cat the capital for the state of Kansas. Yeah, and then it goes back to the time in which these structures were built that you really were dealing with an organization or a group of people that had specific knowledge on how to build these buildings oh, because these are huge buildings for sure. that stand the you, yeah, test of time. For sure. Are, the, you yeah, know. you you definitely didn't put these buildings up with sticks and mud. You know, yeah. you you constructed them out of very hardy materials that were going to last for not just years or decades, but centuries in many cases. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an amazing thing. Um, and then and then to bring that all the way home to um, just locally, you can see that same footprint, right? About so that so you're so it goes all the way back to the beginning of America. Just the, the America. I yes, I, I've read a lot of books and. Um, I believe Paul Revere was a Mason. Paul Revere was a Mason. Uh, yes, so, he was. So more, I say more or less, the founding, the founding of our country in a government the, fashion and form. Yes. Masons were highly involved in that particular function of the founding of the United States, that they 100% believed in the idea of a representation with... Representative government. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. being representative of the population and holding the same values as the population, which we don't think that England held the same values that the colonists had yeah. because we had to go through a revolution to change those. Forms. Well, and I'm, I might be partial, but I think we live in one of the greatest. I mean, we live in the greatest nation in the world. It. I, I believe that we live in the nation that has the greatest opportunity for a person to become his or her idea of what that is. So if you want to be an architect or a senator or a president or, you know, just the best electrician that there is, you can do all of those things right here in the United States. Can you do them in other countries? I'm sure you can, but I'm... I think the opportunity is more limited in those other places where here you have the individual freedom to choose your own destiny and you can make that destiny either come true or fall on its face based on your application. If you choose to make yourself into something great, it, that opportunity is there. Yeah, I'll make a joke that's kind of a dry joke, but what um, initially, you know, when I, I joined, I thought I was going to become part of the Illuminati or something like that. and. 
I, it didn't work out that way. It turns out most of what we do is pretty much just service to to our community, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. We right. Spent a lot of yeah. hot summers uh, in a in a in a fireworks. Yeah, stand, uh, you know? again, it, it comes back to that we are a society with secrets, not a secret society. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that there are members of Masonry that are members of the Illuminati, and maybe that's where the tie comes in. You know, I don't know. Who knows? No, I don't. I, don't get that. I that can't. Started. I can't validate that, right? I don't, I don't have any knowledge. I can to neither somebody confirm that nor says, deny. You know? Yeah. Hey, this guy is an Illuminati, and he's a Mason. I don't know that. But and if he told me, I wouldn't tell you anyway. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. So. Oh man, what a what a, a web we're gonna weave on this one, but. Um, so if i guess what i'm looking for is is uh for you to kind of just as the the leader of this organization this year um i know that that there's like a special time right this year uh something to do with uh the history so this is our 150th year of being an organization in the state of Kansas, which I don't think there's a lot of organizations in Kansas that can say they've been around 150 years. So yeah, that is something very special for us that uh, we're doing this year. So we're, we don't have a specific function at the moment that we're doing around that 150th, um, but we're doing the whole year as a whole is, is around the 150th. So, um, We'll, we'll be giving back in like fashion. Absolutely. Right? Uh, yeah. Well, once again, just to mention that anybody listening to this right now, um, there's getting ready to be a pancake feed on... That's correct. F- May 5th, I believe it is. Saturday, the first Saturday in May. I believe it's May 5th. Um, we will have a pancake feed fundraiser at the lodge building itself, 106 uh, East Broadway. Um, st- it's going to start at like eight o'clock in the morning seven o'clock in the morning whenever the guys decide to open the doors and start going and it'll go clear till noon so um, we have lots of opportunity for people to come out if they want to support uh, the organization and give back to the community that's a a great function to do it Um, the other opportunity is at the uh, fireworks stand so we run a fireworks stand to during the fourth of july i believe that starts on the 30th of june this year and then runs through the fifth um i'm not 100 percent sure on what times but yeah. i do know that it, i think it runs the, we'll be doing it whenever the city allowed us to do it that's correct so yeah look for the city published orders on that and we will be open during those times yes we will <laughs> i love it um okay so wrapping this up um i guess i i have a i, I always do something at the end of a program i i want the person that's sitting here in front of me who's who's come out here and and put themselves on front street to have a conversation with me for the community that's what it really is is you're talking to the community um i always give them the last word and so uh it's kind of open-ended but uh what do you have for us so today, what Scott? i would say is for um those that are listening to that don't have something that they're already doing, or maybe that they are, but get involved in something, whether that be with the Masons, whether that be with the Kiwanis Club, whether that be with the Rotary, whether that be with the city council or the board of, the city board of education with the school district, get involved in something, be a part of the community that makes the community better and brings us to a better point in society um, then, you know, say the past members of organizations before us. So if there was something that you know of that maybe is, isn't as good as it could be or is really good and you just want to make it better, get involved. Do that. Go join something. Put yourself on the line and say, hey, I'm here to help. What can I do? Hmm. Hmm. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. Thank you for coming out today. You're welcome. Thank Thank you you for having me. Yeah, that was Scott Gibbons, who is this 150th anniversary year of uh, our the lodge here in Newton. President of the Newton Masonic Lodge (laughs) during the 150th year. So you're the WM, the WM this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to this special episode of Harvey County Talk. We'll talk to you again soon in the future. I was your host, Lance Gormley. Good day, good night, good riddance, see the way. We hope to catch you next time.